I'm going to give you all the questions as far as this year's GCE questions are concerned. I'm going to treat everything step by step. So all I want you to do is just for you to get your pen and paper because I will read out the questions and we'll be solving it here direct. So if you have anybody who is writing GCE exam, this period, all I want you to do is to share this video to such a person so that the person can partake. A homozygous top plant was crossed with a homozygous dwarf flower plant. The F1 were saved and 160 F2 plant were obtained. Now, the first question, which is A, I says, name the type of genetic cross. Name the type of genetic cross of this. Two, well, that is the I, I says, state one reason for the answer in 4A, I, which is the answer to this reason why you gave the answer you gave here. Now, this one now says, the B says, what is evolution? What is evolution? And here it says, the I, I says, with the end of a genetic diagram, state the phenotypic ratio of F2 generation. Okay, calculate the number of tall and dwarf plants that will be obtained in F2 generation. So now let's take a look at these questions one after the other. Let's take a look at these questions one after the other. So before we can be able to answer these questions, first of all, you must know how to cross bridge. That is the first thing, because if you don't know how to cross bridge effectively, it will be very difficult for you to answer these questions. So just have to pay attention. I will teach you how to cross bridge so that you can you find it very, very easy to do in your exam hall. Okay, so now let's continue. Now, here, let's begin with the first question. They said, name the type of genetic cross. Now, this, this type of genetic cross is known as mono, mono hybrid. Mono hybrid cross. Mono hybrid cross. Now, look at this. Why? That is number two. Now, there's a state one reason for the answer. The reason why it is a monohybrid cross is because it involves only but one threat. It involves only, it involves, involves only one threat. And what is that threat? The threat of tallness, tallness. Or shortness or shortness so this is the threat it's either you are tall or you are short now for this now for this you will see it on the screen this written on the screen now so take note on that now let's take a look at this particular one which says with the end of a genetic diagram state the phenotypic ratio of f2 generation now, for us to do this, we have to clean up some part of this so that we can be able to cross it effectively. Okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with this one. Okay, let me just clean it. We'll read it out from here. I believe you've copied it out so that we don't find it difficult to manage the board we have here. So, here now, for you to be able to cross this, we are talking about the gene of tallness and dwarf. Now, let us take that of gene thread of tallness or gene of tallness to be capital T. Okay? Why that of dwarf? Let's use small t. Okay? Now, for those of you who doesn't know how to cross effectively, watch this video just watch what i'm going to do now i'm going to do it in a way that it will be very very easy for you and for those of you who already know how to cross it you can just go ahead and do your thing okay so what you should do here now is just circle here circle here circle this one circle this one now for precautionary motive you write one two one two i mean for those who doesn't know how to cross this effectively so here now one to one, that is what you should do now. One is to one, two is to two. That is how I teach my students. Then you go come back again and do two is to two and two is to two. 
Then the next one you come back and you now do one is to two, two is to one. You get your answer. Now let's do it. Like as I said earlier, one is to one. Okay? One is to one. You will now have capital T and small t. Now, two is to two. You will now have capital T and small t. I hope you are seeing how I'm doing it. Now you will not come back again. Then you will not do two is to one, one is to two. Look at it now. Two is to one. Two is to one, which is capital T and small t. Then here now is two is to one. Can you see it now? Now we have t and small t. Okay? Now this becomes our F1. Now this F1 means first generation. This F1 means what? First generation. Now remember the question. Let me read out the question. Now from the question, the question says the F1 we are saved, we are saved, and 160 F2 plant we obtain. So since we have crossed this, we've gotten um, a heterozygous gene here, which is, they are all the same. So when they now cross themselves, that is what they mean by self-crossed or saved. Okay? That is what they mean by saved. So now let us bring out these two and cross it for us to get our F2 generation. Okay. So here now we have, um, we have T and small t. Now we also have t and small t. So when we have this now, we are trying to find our f2. Okay? So you still do the same thing I did here. You still do the same thing. Here you have um, this, 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 this. Then we have one, two, one, two. For you to be able to get it accurately. Just like as I said earlier, if you know how to do it, you can forge ahead even before I'm done with this. Okay, so here we have one to one, one is to one, which is capital T, capital T. Then two is to two, which is small t, small t. Then, then two is to one, then we now have capital T and small t. Then here now is two is to one, we now have another capital T and small t. So this becomes our F2. This becomes our F2. So we have been able to find our F1 and our F2. So it is now with this F1 and F2 that we'll be able to answer these questions that follows. Okay, so here they said with the end of a genetic diagram, state the phenotype peak ratio of F2. So now what are the phenotypic ratio? When we talk about phenotypic ratio, phenotypic ratio has to do with just the physical appearance of all these traits. Physical appearance, the way they are, that is how you get it. I don't want to start going deep and explaining things that will confuse you at the process. So, it's just for you to look at these things now. So now let's look at the phenotypic ratios of it. Now here we have capital T, capital T, capital T. Now we have one. How many is this one? Just like this, this is one. Now you put your ratio sign. This capital T small t, how many are they here? Are they three? Are they two? Are they one? Now it's just one, two. So you have two here. Then you put another, because they are one, two. Then the small t is now one. So our ratio here now becomes one is to two is to what? One. One is to two is to one. Now we have answered this question. The number I, I question, which says the phenotypical ratio of F2. We should find it. We have gotten it. So now let's look at the number three question here. Now this number three question here says, calculate the number of tall and dwarf plants that will be obtained in F2 generation. I repeat, calculate the number of tall and dwarf plants that will be obtained in F2 generation. So now look at this. If you look at the first question, the, the, the first illustration which was given to us, now they said here, a homocytic goes um, okay, there yeah, they said a homozygous stock plant was crossed with homozygous dwarf flower plants. The F1 we have saved and 160 F2 
plants were obtained. So already, they are trying to tell us now that after everything has been crossed, we were able to get 160. So if we want to now, if we want to now calculate the number of tall, using this figure here, number of tall and the number of what? Shots. Now, look at what we should do now. Here now, you consider the recessive genes and the, the dominant genes. Okay? Now, when we talk about the dominant genes, this one's now, physically, like if you look at these children now, in the second generation, three are tall. Okay? Three are tall. That is to say that, this one now is very tall, this one now is very tall, but have a gene of shortness. Okay? So this is a, a heterozygous offspring. This is a heterozygous offspring. But physically, they are all tall, but um, genotypically, they have the gene of shortness in them. So, now, we are trying to look, calculate the number of tall and the short. Now, the number of tall and short here now is, this one now is 3 against 1. Okay? 3 against 1. Now, in this 3 against 1, you will now do 160 divided by 4. Divided by 4. It will give us 40. 120. That is to say that that um, number of number of tall in F2 generation generation is equal to 120 while number of dwarf dwarf in F2 generation is 40. So that is the answer. Now we've been able to answer all these questions. Now remember if you have any question as far as this um, tutorial is concerned, please all I want you to do is to leave a comment in the comment section and I promise you that as soon as I get your question, I will give you answer to every question in there. Please, so if you need any assistance, special assistance, as far as the exams are concerned, all you need to do is just for you to follow us on our Telegram channel or our YouTube, um, WhatsApp channel with the number on the screen or you just go to the um, description of this video, I will drop the, the, the Telegram um, um, link where you will join the Telegram group. Yeah, they said states the phylum, kingdom, and the class of the specimen. We are going to be stating the kingdom, the phylum, and the class of the animal drawn here. And here they said highlight on the adaptive features of the specimen, state its functions. So when we highlight it, we have to state write out their function. And here they said what are their economic importance. These are the questions you should be expecting as far as this particular. Um, GCE exam is concerned. So now let's take a look at this. Before we can be able to answer these questions, we first of all label it because from the labeling that we can be able to answer um, this one and then just okay, we can be able to answer this one. So now let's take a look at this. Now here we have um, the pinna, or we can say here. Here now we have the ear. Okay. If you don't want to write here, you can say pinna. Now this is the eyes. The eye. Now here we have the whisker. The whisker. Here we have the mouse. Here we have the the body is divided into three. Here we have the head. We have the neck. And from here to this place we have the trunk. Okay, the trunk. Please do not forget this part. And here now we have the. Uh, this is the hind limb. Here is the hind limb. And this particular one is the four. The folding. Now, here now we have the four. If you don't want to write it, for I just write it here. Okay? 
Okay, so now haven't level then then here we have the tell. We have the tell. So now let's answer starting from this one. Now here they say the state, the filing kingdom, and the class. Now the filing of this particular animal, which is rat, is the filum. The filum is codata. Codata. While the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom is animal leg. Animal leg. Now the class, they are mammals. They are mammals. Mammals. Okay, so that is for this particular question. Now let's take a look at this. They say highlight all the adaptive features of the specimen and state each functions. So now let's take a look at the um, adaptive um, features. Now here we have the eyes. Sorry, the black ink stopped working. So let's continue with our red ink. So we are going to be looking at um, this particular, which it says, highlight all the adaptive features of the specimen and state its functions. So, the adaptive features, here we have the ear. Here, that is an adaptive feature. So, here I'm going to be giving you everything at once. So, here now we have ear. Ear is used for what? It's used for hearing. That is for hearing. Now, we have the eyes. We have the eyes for what? It is for used for seeing. If you don't want to write seeing, you can write sights. If you don't want to write sight, you can write vision. Vision. Okay? That is the function of the eyes. Now let us take a look at the mouth. The mouth. The mouth. The function is for feeding. Is for feeding. Okay, now let's take a look at the four limb and the hind limb. Four limb, or let us call it limb, the limbs. Huh? Now the limbs is used for movement. It's used for movement. Okay, now let's look, use, um, take a look at the whisker. Whisker. Whiskers, which is this hairs around the mouth. The whisker is for sensitivity. Sensitivity. That is the function. So from now we are we are done answering the second question. Okay. Now okay, let's add the four. Let's add the four. The four is used for warmth. Is used for warmth or temperature. If you don't want to use warmth, you can say temperature. Temperature regulation. Temperature regulation. That is the function of the four. Okay, now I haven't answered that one. I believe, let me let me quickly clean up this once. So now here they said the economic importance. When we talk about economic importance of um, rats, okay? We talk about economic importance of rats. It is not just talking about the importance. What we are looking at is both the good and the bad, both the negative and the positive um, impact of this particular animal. Okay, so now let's take a look at it one after the other. Here now, we say it serves as meat. It serves as meat. It destroys it destroys destroys planted crops it bites it bites reduces uses the market the market value of crops crops or plants hmm? now it increases Increases the cost of production of production in controlling in controlling 
Right. So that is that. It increases the cost of production. That is that is to say that during um, um, during control of this particular animal, it can increase the cost of production. Okay. Now another one there says which other one? How many have we listed? One, two, three, four. Now another one there says it is a vector vector of diseases. Diseases to plants. To plants. Now the sixth one, the sixth one says it serves serves as a raw material raw material to industries industries that produces that produces leather that produces leather example okay that produces leather products leather products example shoes shoes bags belts etc so i believe we've done justice to this particular question we've done justice to this particular question please if you have any question as far as this particular um question is concerned please i want you to drop a comment in the comment section and i promise you that i will take my time to explain this better okay so let's now move to another question okay now this is another question this is another question so now let's take a look at this question very very well before we give answer to it here we said a child with blood group o was born to a mother of blood group a now the question now says what is the blood group genotype of the child that is number one that is i i i says what are the possible blood group genotype of the father? I repeat, what are the possible what are the possible blood group genotype of the father? So now let's take a look at this question and solve it the way it should. Please pay attention to this solving. Okay. Now, normally, normally, let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look at this woman. The possibility of a woman with blood group genotype AA to give birth to a child of O is zero. That is to say, it is not possible. For this woman, which is blood group A, to give birth to O, the only possibility there is if the woman is blood group a O. That is to say that this woman can be a contributing factor, or the gene of this woman can be a contributing factor to this blood group O of the child. Okay? So now let's take this one aside. Now let us now consider blood group of the father, because it is from the blood group of the father. Since this woman, they already said it is A. And we are now considering if it is AA, it cannot. But if it is AO, there is possibility. So now let's try to consider that of the man. Now, for this man to be able to give birth to a child with blood group O, that shows that, remember, the blood group of the father was not given. That means that the only possibility is, is either the man is O, O, Okay, that is the genotype. It's either it is O O or B O. So if it is O O and the wife is A A, it means that this man can give birth to a child of blood group O. Now, but if the woman is A O and the man is B O, it means that the both of them, their gene has to cross, their gene has to, you know quote together for them to give birth to this person here, which is the blood group O, which is their baby. Now, that mm -hmm. is to say that the, from the question that they said, what is the blood group genotype of the baby? Like as I said earlier, the blood group genotype of this baby 
is O O. Hope you're getting what I'm saying now. That is the blood group. Because A and A cannot give birth to O. And only B can B O cannot give birth to O O. Hope you're getting it now. So that is to say that for them to be able to give birth to O O, it's either the man is totally O O or the man is B O and the woman is B O. So when um, A, B O and so when A O and B O marries, look at the possibility now. You can see that there is a possibility that they will give birth to this particular baby, which is O O. Okay? There's a possibility here. This is A B. Then this one now is um, this one now is B O and the uh, here now is A O. Can you see it now? So it means that look at the possible blood blood group now. It means that for these people, for the man and the woman to give birth to this particular person, which is O O. Now it means that the man is either it means that the man is either B O or O O. So with this now, I have answered these two questions. Now let's take a look at the two questions. Look at let's take a look at the number. Two questions. Here they say, what are the possible blood group genotype of the man? That is to say that the possible blood group genotype of the man is either BO or OO. While the first one, which is I, is equal to OO, II is equal to BO or OO. That is the possible genotype of the man and the genotype of the baby. Okay? So that answers. The question it is very very simple it is just for you to understand the question and tackle it the way you should please if you have any question as far as this question is concerned drop your comments in the comment section and i promise you that i will give you answer to your question so now let's